there first of all there are several people that I want to recognize first the rotary humble rotary um, we have Pam McNair and Chris Elliott and they were big uh, supporters and contributors to this project we also have Tellepson um, who volunteered the project director Chris Hankins who's not here yet and Tad Tellepson the CEO and they also financially supported this project. And we have Berkshire Community College in Massachusetts. And while we did have two RSVPs, we don't know where they are. And we don't even know, <laughs> given the, the, the current weather conditions, that they were able to get out yesterday. And that's just kind of an, an interesting connection with Berkshire that came from David Beatty, who once served under their former college president, who I knew, who was also a UT grad for the program that I went to, just small connection. So the three groups were our major contributors to see that this project got funded. Um, and we funneled everything through the foundation and we have S Susan Summers and Fiona Burnett here from the foundation. And um, we also have Steve Davis, Professor Davis, who might be teaching a class and is getting a little um, he is needs. Still teaching. Okay, so Steve Davis, Professor Davis may show up as the uh, ceremony is in progress. The idea for this whole project really started from Steve Davis, again, history professor. And soon after Harvey devastated our college, we all know we lived through 80% of our college was unusable. Um, and the first that we got back into most of our buildings was January, not quite a year ago, and the library just opened up in June. So right after Harvey, when there were very few people on campus, it was contaminated, we had fences everywhere, Steve Davis appeared as I was walking around the perimeter uh, outside the fence and said, Comrade Kate, that's what he calls me, um, <laughs> You know that there's this wonderful monument just a little, little farther south that commemorates the win over, um, over the Mexicans in the Battle of the San Jacinto. And it's just a, a fabulous monument. Don't you think we need something like that to commemorate our win over the San Jacinto River? <laughs> And you know, I was a bit distracted at the time. I said, yeah, yeah, Steve, that's a great idea. You know, and, <laughs> and then about a semester later, when things kind of looked like we actually had a plan, I contacted two of our professors, Mario Mari, who's here, um, professor of art, and Dr. Jamie Turner, our professor of engineering, and asked them if they'd put their heads together and collaborate with their students to come up with a design for an obelisk to commemorate our win over the San Jacinto River. And they did so, and um, the rest is history. So I'd like for Mari and Jamie to share with us just some of the, the story and their, yeah, the involvement of the students and how they came up with this design. So this was a year ago, and yes. we were both at the Atascacita Center right across the hallway from one another. And we hadn't really met each other too much ahead of time, but even though I think sometimes people think, oh, the science department and versus the liberal arts department, but I actually am a fan of the STEM to STEAM initiatives of including art, and there, there really is some art and engineering. So I thought it was gonna be a really fun collaboration, and there is some engineering in this structure. In fact, so the foundation was made from one of our students. We got PE stamp documents, and that was, um, so I'll have Taylor Knight did that. He's a student at University of Tyler. He actually is president of the bridge building competition over there. They make big bridges, not just spaghetti bridges. So that was really fun to get in touch with an old student. His father is the PE. They work together on the foundation and then we did the CAD work, which included finite element analysis. So it can withstand hurricane force wind. So it's not just a symbol of something strong. It actually is strong. And it's <laughs> you could survive a hurricane standing in the, in the center of this thing. But yeah, we went through quite a few rough drafts. There was a period where it looked like a lighthouse, a period where it looked like a Christmas tree. We wanted to keep 
the obelisk design and and looking at the at the obelisk south of here, that's actually quite a large structure. So if you scale it down, it would be too narrow. And so it's, it's amazing how much changing, just slightly how much that angle is inclined or a little bit of the proportions completely changes the, the look of it. And, and so going back and forth with Mari, and, and she's definitely the artist between the two of us. So I can make sure it won't fall down. But <laughs> And it was, it was a really neat thing for students to go back and forth on all of the different design possibilities and, and to make something real that they could see on campus and come back to and, and have something memorable. Is that, what was your favorite rough draft design of it? <laughs> okay. Oh, my, my. Well, I brought this, my um, students' sketches <laughs> here. But no, it's all pretty much uh, what all, you know, about the star and, and the, um, <laughs> there's some um, wonderful idea of a waterfall and also the pond, uh, you know, the um, structures very much uh, all reflective of what we, you know, symbolize and about winning the, uh, <laughs> the battle. <laughs> the battle. <laughs> so my role was very simple just because I'm from the East, so I wanted to simplify everything and I saw <laughs> preaching to my uh, Design One student, current students all line up. Yeah. And they're beautiful, gorgeous, <laughs> and I'm very proud. And um, so my role was just simply put everything simple. Yeah, so the two heights on here, this represents the two heights that the waters got on campus. I think there's markers in the buildings that show what it got up to. So. This part represents the floodwaters, and then, of course, rising above the floodwaters we have. And it's supposed to be, there's, I'm from Colorado, and we do these cairn piles that mark trails. You pile up little rocks. You'll see there's a couple little rock piles over here. Some of those are from Colorado. So it's just a, it's a kind of a gateway. It's a marking a trail of where you were and where you're going, and that's another symbolic thing around obelisks. So we talked about four sides, four seasons. There was five sides maybe for five-sided stars, but that's what looked too much like a lighthouse, I think. So yeah, we went for the, the different seasons of life, northeast, southwest, different directions, and you can make a lot of symbolic things about it. But I'll let liberal arts professors do that. And so yeah, so I think there's a little bit of a budget left where we might add some light shining on it from the trees and also some benches around the outside of it. So it will it'll be an evolving project that each new semester of students should be able to come and add maybe one or two new things to it. So yeah, yeah. some of the other ideas were to introduce a sound to it. I know a lot of universities have bells when classes change and this kind of a thing, or we could use some of the music that's produced on campus to add a sound feature to it, and, and lights, and more, yeah, of a seating area, but, and that's a fun thing, that it can grow, it can grow semester to semester through the students, too. Anyone's input is welcome, you know, yeah. what kind of sound, yeah. kind of a, you know, idea, the lights, the color, I'm leaving it open. Yeah, yeah. So, Mari, tell us about the orientation of this because you chose that. The orientation has a, yes, there's a, actually, it's a facing, I believe it's facing east right now. Yes. Yeah. So, my idea of that, well, I wanted to have a when sun rises, it will strike the highest point. And then, so it will be drenched in the sunlight. And I kind of like, thought it would be a good, another symbolic gesture. But also, the wave to be. I know that uh, college took a uh, higher, um, you know, level of water this side and the other side. However, I wanted that to turn around and not water to run, keep on running. But I'd rather have monument that stops the, you know, water <laughs> going any further. It's just a, you know, symbol. But I thought that would be a good orientation for this. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful yeah. spot. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, you. among the trees. Thank you. Thank you. See the talent that we have here that um, made a dream a reality. So I'm 
I thank you on behalf of all the college, professors Mari Amari and Jamie Turner and your students, your very talented students, because they were part of this story too. So this, is, this really symbolizes um, a lot for us about loss, but also about when and celebrating. And so with that, um, would the donors please come forth and let's unveil the plaque that um, commemorates and gives credit to those who helped establish this. Okay, our wonderful Rotary, humble Rotary partners, Chris and Pam, will you do the honors and, and, help, and help us unveil this? Okay, thank you. So this reads, Harvey Memorial Obelisk, dedicated August 2019. The Harvey Memorial Obelisk depicts, depicts Lone Star College Kingwood's triumph over the San Jacinto River floodwaters as a result of Hurricane Harvey on August 29, 2017. The students of art professor Mario Mari and engineering professor Dr. Jamie Turner collaboratively designed this monument and art design one 2D class and engineering graphics one class. This piece reflects good days looking back and forward. Looking back, rusty flood water. Looking forward, polished steel. The rust-colored waves represent the varying heights of the floodwaters in the six buildings. Donations from the following friends made this project happen. Berkshire Community College, the Rotary Club of Humble, and Tellepson. Chris Hankins, Tellepson Builders Project Executive, was the project manager and Betts Art Foundry fab fabricated the steel. And it's got their logos, logos for each one of our donors. So thank you again. And it's time to um, either come reflect around the obelisk or join us in the science building lobby for refreshments. Thank you all for coming this morning.